I love this time of year, and I love the fact that you know we've got COVID-19 that's almost completely gone and out of the news and out of you know just hopefully it's almost done with circulation at this point. And I, I'm glad things are getting back to normal because that means I'm going to be doing a lot of movie reviews. Uh, I'm an avid moviegoer, and I <laughs> I used to see two, sometimes three movies a week before COVID hit. And things are finally getting back to normal. And we have what I would consider to be the bi- the first big movie of, you know, the pre-summer time period right now, which is Michael Bay's new film, Ambulance. And let's talk about this movie, okay? <laughs> um, I have quite a few things to say about this movie. I just got back, and I was looking forward to seeing this movie. Now, I felt like the trailer showed way too much. So if you've seen the trailers, uh, you're getting exactly what the trailers show you. I'm glad that this movie is not a bait and switch. Uh, what you see in the trailer is what you're going to get. And hey, if you like Michael Bay films, you're probably going to like this movie. It doesn't mean it's perfect. Uh, I am going to talk about what I liked about the movie and what I didn't like, and there's plenty not to like. Uh, I will tell you first off that Michael Bay goes full woke in this film. Uh, there is a gay character in this film that they go out of their way to show you that he's gay. He has a, a kiss with his husband, uh, and it it doesn't have anything to do with the storyline. You could tell it's one of those Hollywood things that had to be thrown in there and just to check mark a box, and it did not add to the movie. And you didn't even know need to know that character's backstory in the first place. Uh, it, it was stupid. Uh, there's no way, there's no two ways to say it. Uh, why they feel like they have to keep shoving this stuff into movies is just going to, it, it just annoys people, the normal moviegoer. It just does. The other thing I'll tell you is you could teach a dog new tricks because Michael Bay, you know, this guy's been doing movies forever and his style is definitely in this movie, but what he's discovered are drones. Holy freaking crap. There were these... He, Many times during the film, he had this drone shot of coming up off of a building, going straight down, and then doing a loop and going forward. And he did this like a half a dozen times in the film, and it's like it's enough to make you throw up. And I'm like, why did somebody have to show him drones? Like, can't he just make do with what he's been doing for the last 20 years? Uh, I just, I don't know. I, I don't know why. Heaven forbid this guy has learned how to use a drone in his movies, and oh my gosh, you are going to be annoyed. Uh, So those were my two biggest complaints of the film. Now let's talk about the cast here. So the cast is pretty decent. So we've got Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal. He is one of the main characters. The other main character, and I hope I'm saying his name right, is Yahya Abdul Mateen II. Uh, He plays, actually... Jake Gyllenhaal's brother in the film. And I know him from, he played Black Manta in in Aquaman, so I've seen him before. You also have the other main character in the film is Isa Gonzalez. Uh, I've seen her before, but I couldn't tell you what from. Uh, I've seen her, I want to say she was probably on a comedy on TV or something. Uh, I'm not really familiar with her at all. But I'll tell you what, she is a dead ringer for the girl from Transformers. And I've been trying to think of her name all night, but my gosh, you can tell that Michael Bay has this certain look he wants with his female, you know, stars, and she fits the bill. She looks almost identical to the girl who was in the Transformers movies. And so he definitely has a look he's going after. Now, the other big name that you would probably know in this film is Garrett Dillahunt. And he's from oh, many different things. He was on Raising Hope. Uh, he was in the Sarah Connor Chronicles as as the uh, as the Terminator, and he's also in the the one of the Walking Dead spinoffs, which I kind of lost interest in the Walking Dead, so I'm not following anymore. But I know he's still on there. So these are the big names in the movie, and then you have a bunch of character actors off to the side that you would recognize. So here's what's good about the film, okay? The the film is competent. Uh, It's an action film, and this film never lets up. Like, it is on the gas, and it goes the entire film. This movie got an R rating because of language. I don't think there's anything else in this movie that would give it an R rating other than the language, which which they could have easily done without. Now, here's the interesting thing about stuff being rated R. When... 
when Zack Snyder's Justice League came out and when you had, I, I can't remember if Justice League is rated R or not, but when Batman versus Superman, his extended version came out, it was rated R. And it's not rated R because of language or specifically violence. It was rated R because there are some extended action sequences. So for people who don't know, if an action scene goes on for too long in a film, it's automatically going to get snapped with an R rating. And this movie definitely, man, it it goes. It, it just absolutely goes from the beginning. And the basic plot of the film, and I'm not, I'm going to make this spoiler free. So, it, the basic plot of the film is um, Mateen's character needs to to get some money for his family. They need a surgery that's going to cost a lot of money. So he goes to his brother for help, and he gets roped into this robbery. And at the beginning of the film, you know, the robbery happens pretty quickly at this bank. And it has one of the longest shootouts I have ever seen. And the one thing this movie did really well was the sound effects. I mean, the weapons in that scene, the sounds, and how long it went on was pretty incredible. And that could be one of those things that made this rated R because that scene goes on for a good 25 minutes. It is not a short sequence. And you can't always tell exactly what's going on or, or you know, how it's all put together, but... That's typical Michael Bay. This was one of his messiest films. So, But the cast is competent. They play their roles really well. And the movie does move at a very quick pace. So I will tell you, you will not be bored. I brought my wife. She really didn't want to go to a movie, but she went with me so that I could get my review up. And she never, she didn't fall asleep. She watched the whole time. She admitted it was entertaining. But does that make this a great film? No, it doesn't. Uh, At the end of the day, this movie was somewhat of a mess. Uh, The story, and you're wondering how it's going to play out and what happens, and there's plenty of ridiculous laugh moments in the film. And it's just not, a lot of it's not logical. So at the end of the day, the film, you know, my rating on it is is three and a half or seven out of ten stars. So three and a half out of five, seven out of ten. This is a movie that I might add to my collection because it's a Michael Bay film, but when I can find it for about $5. Uh, It's not something I would definitely pay full price for when it gets released to add to my collection. So it's a competent film. If you go to the movies, you are definitely going to be entertained. You're not going to be bored, but it's not the most logical film. It doesn't flow in a way that is going to make you say, this is amazing. But it's competent. Uh, I will tell you, I could do without the drone shots. I could do without the woke garbage that they throw in there for absolutely no reason other than to have it in the film in the first place. So outside of those things, there's really nothing to complain about. It, it, it's a competent film. It's a Michael Bay film through and through. One thing I do like is he doesn't use a lot of, you know, some of these blue filters and green filters that a lot of other filmmakers do. Uh, Most of his stuff is filmed with real color. I'm sure he's got some filters in there, but I do appreciate being able to see something like L.A. in its normal, you know, colors and everything. So he does have a style, and if you're used to Michael Bay's style, you know what you're getting. So go enjoy the film. If you guys have seen it, let me know what you think, and I will be reviewing a lot of the movies coming up pretty soon. Can't see everything uh, until I, you know, have a way to get to the movies all the time the way I would like. We have one family vehicle, and my wife usually has it uh, So because since I work from home. So I'm not going to be able to go all the time, but I was able to go see this one and get my review up early. So I, I hope you guys appreciate it. Let me know what you guys thought, and I will see you guys on the next video.